I'm kind of frustrated, folks. Um, the van is not working. Uh, I got a hearing aid that fucking doesn't work right. This, you know, the, the question for me is, do I hang around Humboldt, go to an, an audiologist here, see how long it takes to get a new one? Um, or do I just, uh, it's, it's not even a question of the ear mold, it's a question of this thing just fucking doesn't work right. Um, it just, if I have it up to where I can hear, it, it beeps. And I, if I press on this this way, it beeps. I, it probably partially is the mold. But if I hold it this way, I can actually hear a little bit. But then if I'm not holding it, you hear that? It whistles, it's just this constant beep. I turn it down to where it doesn't beep, and I can't hear shit. I might as well not even have it in. Uh, so I had to get that taken care of. Um, I still want to get 20 shows total on Axis Humboldt. I think I can do that. Um... That landlord, he's starting his, he's continuing his bullshit. Um, because he knows that I'm not a coward who can be bullied and pushed around by him. And he essentially is a coward. Uh, he, uh, a coward who looks stupid because he believes uh, rumors on Craigslist, but then he uh, refuses to look at the facts. That in and of itself makes him look stupid. So, yes, he does look stupid, but he's engaging in stupidity, which, you know. But no, it's everybody else's fault that he looks stupid. He's a dumbass. Anyway. Um, I'm just like, you know, the van, the van, oh, God. All that effort time, money, into the van. Don't get me wrong, it's a good van for this area, for driving around, not really doing much of anything. Because um, this place is, you know, pretty rural, it doesn't have the traffic congestion that LA does. It. I mean, even, even if I thought it had the ability to get through mountains, which it doesn't, uh, it would not survive in LA. Um, the cops would see that the windshield is broken, that the drive, that the, one of the mirrors is broken. Um, I mean, they, they were targeted for theft. They were targeted for ticketing. Um, pretty soon I would have like hundreds of dollars of fixed tickets and then I would have my license once again revoked due to failure to pay because you know, it's not about safety, it's about revenue generation. <sighs> and you know what, what's another thing that's kind of frustrating me is I feel like people are urging me to just up and go. Um, I tried that with Phoenix and that was a failure. Uh, somewhat, because it just, um, it didn't work out right. It didn't work out. And there's just there's other stuff I have to do here before I can get there, and it's just um, you know because I'm I'm not gonna go half cocked I'm not gonna go and not be ready for what because I know when I get there it's gonna be you know I'm gonna have to hit the ground running because it's a completely different world than this is in some ways, but at the same time. It's not. So, uh, you know, whereas this world that I'm living in, known as Humboldt, it has very few services, very few businesses, very few medical places. Uh, you know, everything is super expensive. Um, you know, for example, they wanted uh, down here at Target uh, a, a flip cam, just a basic flip cam like the one I'm using from. Uh, this one that I've got now, if I can find it, that I'm using from Freedoms, uh, or not Freedom, but uh, Public Access. It basically, you know, it costs, I went down to Target and I found out that it cost me 
it would cost me if I bought it there. Uh, it would cost, you know, just like this, right? It would cost me. <sighs> I hate this fucking table. It would cost me about 150 bucks, right? Plus tax. So that would make it about 160. Found it on used one on Amazon for like 90. So I went ahead and ordered it. Should get it in a week. Um, because this this is actually property of Humboldt Access, and they're kind enough to let me use it, but they're not gonna. I'm not, I'm not gonna take a tally with me. That's just irresponsible. And this thing continues to be. I'm so fucking tired of it. You know, people bitch at me. They're like, Nick, why can't you understand anybody? Nick, why don't you communicate? Nick, why don't you talk right? Nick, 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 Nick. Why don't I, why can't I fucking hear you people? This, this piece of shit that I can't get fucking replaced. Because every time I go to a goddamn audiologist, they want to fuck around and hand me a piece of shit that doesn't fucking work. How, how can I communicate? How can I know what's going on when I don't have something that works, when I can't hear people? Uh, I need to get one of those small little things that fits right in the ear that I can just turn off and on. Because this thing, you know, hanging on the side of my head. I mean, uh, it just, it does not work. Um, see, this little thing doesn't even close properly. It's open half the time, and it's just, just it's a piece of shit. Um, I mean, the question is, you know, I mean, if I could, <coughs> if I could find a little office for like 150 bucks, or not even that. I mean, if I if I got the damn doors on my van to open up, because right now I can't get into any of them except the passenger side driver, you know, the passenger side door. So I'm gonna fucking take a sledgehammer today to it to the doors and see if I can get them. They're, they're supposedly just jammed. And I'm not spending a hundred bucks to take him to a fucking locksmith. There's like two locksmiths in this whole fucking goddamn county. Yeah, well, in this, you know, area. Um, in this little 20 mile area, there's only two locksmiths. So basically, uh, one of them is incompetent and the other one is a ripoff artist. Um, that's what you get in a small town. You get, I mean, it's, it's so isolated. If you can corner the market through knowing the right people, um, you can jack up your prices 100% compared to what, you know, what you'll find in a big city. I'm just really frustrated with this whole shit. And I've got to get the teeth fixed and I'm just, it, it's like I've got, I feel like I've got people wanting me to go when I don't have everything set up. And it's just, I, again, with the turning, I turn my head and the thing, Stand it every goddamn day, every fucking hour of every day. Can God damn it? See, I have it turned down so it doesn't do any beeping at all. And I can't hear anybody. I can't. People will be yelling at me from across the room. I can't hear them, even though I've got a hearing aid in my ear. Ah.
Yeah. I'm just really frustrated. Um, and the landlord, he keeps, he keeps doing his... It's, it's like I've got all these people trying to manipulate me. And I'm just, like, fucking tired of it. It's not that I think that there's not going to be people in L.A. who try to manipulate me. It's just that I think I'm going to have a better chance of not having to interact with those types. It's just... Another thing that I was thinking of, um, because I've got that book, that not for, I see everything's behind my freaking camera. Um, I've got that, you know, not for tourists. I think basically I've, I've been to Venice Beach before. I've seen Hollywood before. Um, the subway's actually pretty nice. Uh, Santa Monica, I've seen that. Uh, West LA, I've seen that. Um, really, I think, you know, the thing about it is, it's actually, I mean, the distance-wise, it's actually not that big. If you, like, um, where is that stupid, it's not even anywhere near there. What is that, 25, 23, okay. Let, let's look at, for example, uh... Not else you can do, that sucks. Where is that blue area? Let's just look at Santa Monica, okay? Um, Santa Monica, for example. All that, that whole square, uh, it's, it's divided by half miles, so that's one, two, three, four. It's about four miles across, about eight miles uh, long or whatever, but I need to find a place like in a certain section and just you know that be my home base. That just be where I live. Um, you know, it just and I've I've looked on Craigslist, which I don't care for Craigslist, and most of the cheap places are basically just scams. So. Uh, you know, I'm almost going to have to call rental places and, you know, say, hey, um, you know, uh, do you have any cheap, really, really just dirt cheap places? Um, you know, and I've got to have a plan of action when I get up there because I'm not just going to have an apartment and sit in it. Um, I mean, at least here I can do recycling, but there's nothing here. There's just literally nothing here. I mean, if I could get one of those large doors on the van operational, either the sliding door or the back doors, which they're, they're all just supposedly jammed, then I can recycle, um, do that for a couple weeks, get some money saved up for the stuff I need. I'm... I, I'm Oh, I don't know. It's just, you know, the money just does not go that far, and I'm just really, I'm, I'm kind of feeling discouraged, just bec not because it's going to be hard, but, you know, it, it's like, I'm 36 years old, why am I still having to put up with this nonsense? You know, where is... Where's my car? Where's my house? Where's my career? Where's my wife? Where's my kids? Where's my my fucking uh, savings account? Where where's my vacations? Where where are my my luxuries of living in this society? Um I, I mean, I, I get so pissed off because I see all these people driving around in fancy cars. And I see all these people, you know, it, it's like the society gives it to them. The society says, you're a good slave here. And it, it's, it's been like this for me my whole life. Oh, you, you question us. Huh? You're evil. Huh? 
it's like with driving. Okay, this this the society, the state says driving is a privilege, and the slack jawed idiots go. Last master is, is a privilege. Why is I, on the other hand, I say, why is it a privilege and not a right? And upon even hearing that question, the slave masters go, Oh my God! Blasphemy! Blasphemy against the state! You must be punished! I mean, literally, just for asking a question. You know, don't piss off the people in power. Why? Huh? That's another reason why I can't stand these fucking fake activists. There's so many fake activists up here. Fake fucking activists. They stand up for these issues that don't fucking mean anything, but then when the shit hits the fan and it comes down to the wire and the big fucking, uh, you know, the, the elites stand up and go, Nyeh! All these so-called activists, it's like fucking instantaneous they drop to their knees and they're like oh, 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 oh. which is another reason why I'm just fucking I'm done with activism I, you know <laughs> I'll, I'll do some more activist videos for access Humboldt but um, you know and if people want to hear it I'll speak it but <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. It just it doesn't work. Um, maybe I'll try the spiritual route because I know I you know it's like I've read where is that book? Uh, nothing was organized on my table. The Virtue of Selfishness by Ayn Rand. I know that when I read that book and I started following those principles, my life changed for the better. I know it did. It changed for the better. I started to like myself a lot more. I accepted myself a lot more. You know, we live in a society where we have the state, we have the church, the schools, the corporations, etc. All with one message. One message. You're broken and only we can fix you. And in only f uh, the only way for us to fix you is for you to submit to us. Give us your money, give us your property, give us your mind, and let us do your thinking for you. That's the only way that you can ever be fixed. And even then it's doubtful that you can be fixed because you're so horribly, horribly broken. This is their one single unanimous message. It's the only message, it's the main message, is you're a fuck up, let us be in control of you. And anybody who sits there and says, wait a minute, I'm not a fuck up, I'm just a human being, I'm not horribly flawed, I'm a work in progress, I have potential to become better. The minute you say that, it's blasphemy to the state, it's blasphemy to the church, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy to the society. Because we're all supposed to sit there and go, you know, we're all supposed to subconsciously, you know, know that we're a bunch of broken, incapable, incompetent fuck-ups, but then we're supposed to pretend that we're capable, and as long as we have the approval of the state, or of the church, of the educational system, you know, we need everybody else's approval to be okay, and, you know, um, we, we need to wear the right clothes, eat the right food, buy the right products, uh, believe the right ideology, you know, blah, 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 you know, just bow down, shut up, and obey. As long as we do that, we're good, but if we even question the dominant paradigm, we're horrible people. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like the state stabs you with a knife. It's stabbing you. And then you're saying, well, stop stabbing me. And you start bleeding all over the floor. And then the state goes, you're a bad person. You're bleeding all over the floor. You say to the state, I'm bleeding because you're stabbing me. The state goes, it has nothing to do with it. How dare you accuse me? I'm going to punish you. So now you're being stabbed with two knives. And you're still bleeding all over the floor. 
And the state says, now you're bleeding on the floor even more. You're a horrible person. You, uh, we're going to have to put it. We, we, we want you to pay us money for all that blood that you're bleeding on the floor because somebody's going to have to clean that up. And you're like, well, stop stabbing me and I'll stop bleeding. Oh, how dare you accuse that? It's just this, uh, this, this cycle of insanity. You have this, God, it's just like, ugh. You know, the only way to change it is at a spiritual level. That's the only way to change it. It's to get each and every one of you people to comprehend the nature of reality. To comprehend the nature of your own soul. To comprehend the nature of your own mind, your own heart, and your own spirit. To make you comprehend the fact that you are not horribly broken. That this, you know, it, it's like the state tells you you're broken. And then it says, um, yeah, the state comes along and says, we're going to charge you all this money because you're broken. And the only way you can be unbroken is if you follow our policies, right? You know, they cut, they come beat you down. They say, we're beating you because you're broken. And the only way you cannot be broken is by giving us more money and following our policies. So it's, a, you know, because you're, they're beating you, you're screaming in pain. Then they say, oh, well, you're in pain because you're not giving us, you know, all, all this money and all this power to control your life. So that's why you're in pain. No, you're in pain because they're beating you, not because you're broken. It's like you're, you're not bro being broken is not your inherent nature. It's not. I mean, what do I need to do to make you understand that? To make you understand that you are not broken. What do I need to do? Because no matter where I go, I see all these people with their heads to the ground, their eyes to the ground, they're broken. Or at least they think they are. They act like they're broken. You know, they act like they're guilty. They act like there's something wrong with them. And then they buy into this premise that if they, if they obey the right laws or buy the right products or believe the right ideology, that somehow they're magically not broken because they have everybody else's approval. Oh, you're, you know, you, you need everybody else's approval. You know, this, this is one of my big issues with my fucking trolls. This was one of my big issues with that fat, that, 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 that fat ass, uh, who did all those fucking slander videos of me. He was like, his mentality is, oh, I'm broken, and so are you. And the minute that I said, no, I'm not broken, I don't believe I'm broken. It was, oh, that's blasphemy, huh? Because if you believe that you're not really broken, that means the slave masters, the state, the church, etc., doesn't get to have control over you. Now, if, if I say I'm not broken, and that means that the state and the church and all these people have no authority over me and, and don't have a right to control me, what does that mean about you? Because, you know, the, the secret terror, the secret terror that a lot of you feel isn't that you're, you're broken and that you're going to be unloved. The secret terror is, oh my God, what if I'm not really broken? What if all these people that I've put my trust and faith in are the ones who are, are basically just lying to me? You know, and it, it goes back to, you know, uh, the subconscious and with, you know, parenting and stuff like that. Because, you know, when you're born, your parents are basically gods. And if your gods are hostile to you, it's frightening. If they're benevolent to you, it's good. It's pleasurable. So, 
people sit there and they, they have this transference, you know, they go from thinking mommy, daddy to uh, school, to government, to society. So pretty soon they go from needing parental approval to needing governmental approval. It's, oh, if my parents approve of me, I'm good. Now it's, oh, if my government approves of me, I'm good. Well, what happens when your parents are complete fuck-ups? It's the same thing that happens when your government's a, com you know, it's just, when your government's a complete fuck-up. You know, it, it's, it's, it's frightening, because it's like, okay, how do I deal with these people who have all this power over me? Because when you're a child, when you're a baby, you have no power. You have no power. If your parent wants to beat you, they have no, you know, they have all the power. So you grow up and you become an adult and you live in a government and your government holds a gun to your head and says, we're going to uh, demand all this money from you. What do you do? There's nothing you can do. So instead of, you know, dealing with the horror of a corrupt state, you sit there and pretend, you, you justify it. It's like this Stockholm Syndrome. It's, you, you, you go, oh, it's good that my government is stealing from me. It's good that my government is imprisoning me. It's good that my government is, 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 is saying that I can't have a gun or free speech or property. It's good because my government loves me. Ah. I mean, it, it's such a, an infantile mentality that there's really just, that there's really no comparison to it. There's really no comparison to it. I'm just, I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up. I'm just fed up.